Okay, before we get into chapter 3.2, let's do a little review here. Uh, this one might take some little leaps, but deduce why viral particles cannot be viewed using a compound light microscope. So, is the answer A, viral particles are too small to affix or attach to a glass slide, viral particles are positively charged and cannot be stained by the negatively charged dyes used for bacterial cells, C, viral particles are too unstable to view with light microscopy, or D, viral particles are too small to be resolved with a light microscope. Okay, this one's a little tough. Try to work it out. Pause the video. Think about it. Okay, so the answer would be D, viral particles are too small to be resolved with a light microscope. And what this means, uh, I will talk about in a moment. We talked a little bit about resolution, right? The ability to distinguish between two points. Uh, our light microscopes have a limit of resolution and viruses are too small for that. So this is like probably a tiny, I didn't give you quite enough information. We haven't talked about all these pieces here. We'll talk about them in a moment. I wouldn't like do this to you on a test, but I wanted you to think about it. And I also want to reiterate that viruses are too small because I always get questions. Can we look at viruses in class? Unfortunately, no, because we don't have an electron microscope. So our microscopes use light and light behaves in certain ways, uh, which is called, the study of that is called optics. Um, and uh, that really has to do with how light is bent and moves through surfaces. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how light interacts with an object. Um, and then talk about this property called refraction, which makes magnification possible and talk about the limits of that for light microscopy. So at its core, light is a wave, okay? And uh, we have this property called wavelength, um, which is the distance between the peaks and uh, different wavelengths have different energy and um, all of these can though carry information. Uh, for us, in most cases, uh, we think about that in terms of what we see every day, visible light. Only a small portion of our light spectrum actually is visible to our eyes. There's other kinds of light that you might be familiar with, ultraviolet light that you can't see but can cause sunburn, right? I get a little pink if I don't put enough sunscreen on. Um, things like x-rays can actually penetrate through tissues and we can see bones with them because they're super high energy. And then gamma rays, those are very, very harmful, high energy radiation. They don't make you turn into the Hulk, unfortunately. They tend to give you cancer. Um, they're very bad for you. On the other side of the spectrum, as we get longer in wavelength, we got infrared, which we can feel as heat, uh, microwaves, which work in your microwave to heat your food um, by vibrating water molecules around, but they can also transmit information. Microwave relay towers can send information. Then we have uh, TV radio waves, AM, FM, things like that down here in this end of the spectrum. But in this narrow little band, we have visible light from, uh, you know, around a little over 700 nanometers in wavelength down to uh, a little under 400 nanometers in wavelength. We have the spectrum. So that's your red, orange, uh, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, right? Your Roy G. Biv there. Um, that's what our eyes can see. And this is what our light microscopes work with. And this, you might not think of this as information, right? But all the things we can see around us, I can see things on the wall back there, right? Um, they're all because light is coming out of the light that I have next to my camera and bouncing off the wall and then shining into the camera. That's information, right? That's, that's information through these different wavelengths of light. Now for us, when we use our light microscopes, a lot of small things like bacteria and uh, parasites, they don't have a lot of color to them naturally. So here in image A, this is just straight up what we would see normally some cells here. Uh, you can see kind of some highlights of it, but like you can't make out much here. One of our problems is that we need contrast we need a difference between light and dark so we use stains to increase contrast 
So here a stain has been applied and we can see these dark regions and here a fluorescent stain has been applied and we really can see it now. So think about it here, right? We have this hunter that's wearing camo, but has the blaze orange vest and hat on that provide contrast, right? So we can see them uh, in the woods there where the rest of them does not have a lot of contrast from the background, right? This the difference between bright and dark is very high, whereas on the arm here, the difference between this and this, or maybe the leg here, right, it's not very great. We have less contrast here. Same principle for our light microscopes. We wanna increase the contrast, and we do that by staining things. But to back up even further, how do we actually see things, right, through our light microscopes? Well, when light shines, it can interact with objects in different ways. And uh, this has to do with a confusing property of light. If you wanna get into quantum physics and things like that, uh, this, is, this is your chance here, right? Light moves like a wave, but it also has the properties of a particle. So we call those photons. Uh, when light hits an object, those photons uh, will do something. They can be absorbed. This is called absorption. That means the object blocks part of the light and the photons get absorbed and they dissipate as heat. Uh, we could also have reflection. So you're probably familiar with this with mirrors, right? The, the light goes in and gets reflected out. Um, then there's this property called refraction. And this is the one we deal with in our light microscopes because we shine light through a sample that goes through a glass slide and comes out the other end and gets into our lenses. Uh, in our light microscopes, it's kind of backwards. It works upwards, but we'll get there. This one is interesting because uh, the light bends when it enters the substance and it kind of changes its speed. This is probably you're familiar with if you like stick a stick into a pond, right? It looks like it bends. The stick doesn't really bend. It's the light that you're seeing that's bent by the, the light uh, going into the water and bending because of the change in speed. There's also scattering. This is another property, but this refraction is really the one that enables magnification. So refraction uh, with a curved surface like a lens can be used to focus light. And uh, as light rays enter a curved lens, we can focus them to one single point that we call a focal point. How do we use this to magnify? Well, we can move the lens and uh, move the kind of focal point and end up getting a larger version of the image we're looking at. So here we have a image of a tree. The light comes off of this and goes into this giant lens here and gets bent, refracted. And if we go further away and project it on a screen that's further away, it actually becomes bigger. It gets magnified. So at its simplest, this is how our light microscopes are working. Okay, mind blown, right? Uh, don't worry too much about this. Like the book goes into math about this. Nope, we're not doing that, right? Just know that a lens is a, basically a curved piece of glass that refracts this. And it's really critical that lenses can only do so much. We have a limit to the magnification we can do, which we'll see in the next section. Okay, so light is electromagnetic radiation. It can interact with objects and can acquire information there. That's important because in our microscope, we're gonna shine light through a sample and it's gonna acquire information there. Uh, we can hopefully get some contrast there, but we can also increase contrast by staining, right? That's changes in light versus dark from the background. Uh, we do have absorption. Energy can be absorbed, but we really focus on refraction here, the bending of light, um, and that allows our magnification. Okay, we'll talk about our light microscope specifically in 3.3 next.